you will hear a man phoning a woman about an advertisement he has seen in the paper for some furniture. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello? Oh, hello. I'm ringing about the advertisement in yesterday's newspaper, the one for the bookcases. Can you tell me if they're still available? We've sold one, but we still have two available. Right. Um, can you tell me a bit about them? Sure. Um, what do you want to know? Well, I'm looking for something to fit in my study. So, well, I'm not too worried about the height, but the width's quite important. Can you tell me how wide each of them is? They're both exactly the same size. Let me see. I've got the details written down somewhere. Yes. So they're both 75 centimetres wide and 180 centimetres high. OK, fine. That should fit in OK. And I don't want anything that looks too severe. Not made of metal, for example. I was really looking for something made of wood. That's all right. They are, both of them. So are they both the same price as well? No, the first bookcase is quite a bit cheaper. It's just £15. We paid £60 for it just five years ago, so it's very good value. It's in perfectly good condition. Well, they're both in very good condition, in fact. But the first one isn't the same quality as the other one. It's a good, sturdy bookcase. It used to be in my son's room, but it could do with a fresh coat of paint. Oh, it's painted? Yes, it's cream at present. But as I say, you could easily change that if you wanted. To fit in with your colour scheme. Yes, I'd probably paint it white if I got it. Let's see, what else? How many shelves has it got? Six. Two of them are fixed, and the other four are adjustable, so you can shift them up and down according to the sizes of your books. Right, fine. Well, that certainly sounds like a possibility. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. But the second one's a lovely bookcase too. That's not painted, it's just the natural wood colour, dark brown. It was my grandmother's, and I think she bought it sometime in the 1930s. So I'd say it must be getting on for 80 years old. So it's very good quality. They don't make them like that nowadays. And you said it's the same dimensions as the first one? Yes, and it's got the six shelves, but it also has a cupboard at the bottom that's really useful for keeping odds and ends in. Right. Oh, and I nearly forgot to say, the other thing about it is it's got glass doors, so the books are all kept out of the dust. So it's really good value for the money. I'm really sorry to be selling it, but we just don't have the room for it. Hmm. So what are you asking for that one? Ninety-five pounds. It's quite a bit more, but it's a lovely piece of furniture. A real heirloom. Yes. All the same, it's a lot more than I wanted to pay. I didn't really want to go above 30 or 40. Anyway, the first one sounds fine for what I need. Just as you like. So, 
Is it all right if I come round and have a look this evening? Then, if it's okay, I can take it away with me. Of course. So you'll be coming by car, will you? I've got a friend with a van, so I'll get him to bring me round. If you can just give me the details of where you live. Sure. I'm Mrs. Blake. B L A K E. That's right. And the address is Forty One Oak Rise. That's in Stanton. Okay. So I'll be coming from the town centre. Can you give me an idea of where you are? Yes. You know the road that goes out towards the university. Yes. Well, you take that road, and you go on till you get to a roundabout. Go straight on, then Oak Rise is the first road to the right. Out towards the university, past the roundabout, first left. First right, and we're at the end of the road. Got it. So I'll be round at about seven, if that's all right. Oh, and my name's Connor, Connor Field. Fine. I'll see you then, Connor. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. Section two. You are going to hear a lecture about dining services. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fourteen. Now listen to the tape and answer questions eleven to fourteen. Welcome to the dining commons. This is the newest facility on campus, and I am proud to say, also one of the best. I know that all university students miss eating home cooked food. Well, this year we are hoping to provide students with food and services that will make you feel at home, even without your family. The administration has been listening to the voice of the students. Students gave us frequent suggestions last year as to how we could improve the university. One of the most frequent suggestions was improving the dining options. We have been working hard all summer to come up with ideas that will make student life in the dormitories more pleasant. One of the new options we are offering in the dining facilities. Is variety in student meals. Last year, there was a set menu for every dinner, so if students didn't like the food, there was no choice. Students had to eat whatever was served. But this new dining facility has three completely unique areas, each with a different theme. At every meal, there will be three options for students to choose from. For example. There might be Italian food at station number one, which might consist of pizza and pasta. At station number two, there would be American food, consisting of hamburgers and hot dogs. At station number three, there could be vegetarian soups and salads, accommodating all the vegetarians. We hope that with the greater selection of food. All students will find something to their liking. Now look at questions fifteen to twenty. Now listen to the tape and answer questions fifteen to twenty.
Not only will students have more options, the food will also be better. Each section of the facility will have a head chef. These are real chefs that have been trained in culinary school and have been hired specifically by the school to work in the dining facilities. All of the chefs have a speciality. The school is hoping that these chefs will prepare better tasting and more nutritious food. Every student will be able to make suggestions and also give their input as to which menus taste better. Last year, many students complained that the dining facilities didn't have very convenient hours. This year, we hope to change that. We will open for breakfast at 6am to accommodate all the early risers. In the evenings, we will open until midnight for all the students that like to go for a late night snack. The afternoons will still remain closed, but we will have a student store open that will provide all students with drinks and fruit. The student store will be open every day from 2pm to 5pm. Every student that has paid full tuition and dormitory fees has already paid for their dining facility fees. Students can eat at any time and in any amount for free. If you are a student that does not live in a dormitory, you can still purchase a dining facility card. This card will entitle you to the full services of the dining facility. This card is available only for students and is not open to the general public. If you are not a student and wish to dine here, you must purchase meals at the door. There are a few rules to follow. Even though we do not limit the amount of food that can be taken, we do not want students to waste food. Please do not take more than you can eat. Also, every student must clean his or her own trays and plates. We will provide plates and trays for student use, but please do not abuse these items. Please do not leave your plates on the tables. Your parents are not here to clean up after you anymore, so I hope all students will be responsible. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the upcoming year. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation about shopping. Masahiro is an international student who has just arrived from Japan. And Anna and Will are doing some shopping with him. You have some time to read questions 21 to 26 first. Listen to the first part of the conversation now and answer questions 21 to 26. Here we are, guys. I'm going to stop by Bergner's first. I might just get lucky today. Who knows? Some of their dresses might be on sale. Bergner's? It's a fairly well-known department store. Sort of like pennies. They've got some quality stuff. Do you want to check it out? Why not? I need to get something for Lisa's birthday. She's into name brands. Any suggestions? A Gucci handbag or a Calvin Klein t-shirt might be nice. Designer perfume is another option. Which reminds me, I have a 15% discount coupon for learners and pennies. I hardly ever shop at learners. I'm not that big on women's clothing. I rarely shop at pennies. So go ahead and use the coupon if you can. 
Here they are. Thanks a lot, Will. That's really very thoughtful of you. My pleasure, ma'am. Oh no, I was supposed to give Liz a buzz an hour ago. Hope I have a quarter. Need a nickel? Actually, I don't have anything but pennies in change. Does any of you have a dollar in change? Sorry, I don't. But I do have thirty-five cents on me. Will that be okay for the phone call? Great. I really appreciate it. I'll make it quick. Do you guys want to go ahead? Well, wait. Just don't forget us. I won't. Why don't we just meet here in thirty minutes? Sounds good. I guess I'll just look around. Can I help you, sir? No thanks. I'm just looking. Well, just out of curiosity, how much is that necklace? Twenty nine ninety nine. Really? My sister's birthday is tomorrow. She loves jewellery. I just wasn't sure I could afford it. You'll find that a lot of our stuff is amazingly affordable. Well, that's certainly nice to know. I'll take it. It's a good choice. I'm sure she'll love it. Let's hope so. Cash or charge, sir? Uh, charge, please. Do you accept Discoverer? Yes, we do. Great. That comes to thirty-one ninety-nine with tax. Please sign next to X. Do you need some help, sir? Well, I'm looking for. Let's see. I've forgotten the name again. It's used to make fresh coffee. A coffee maker. That's right. Well, we have a few in kitchenware, which is upstairs. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, there you are, Masha Hero. What did you get? Just a simple coffee maker. Good choice. And you will find anything interesting? A necklace for Stephanie's birthday. Lucky her. Did you get anything? Just a couple of silly earrings that I liked. I did a lot of window shopping. That can't hurt. True. Well, do you guys need anything else from this place? One last thing. Oh no, I've forgotten what you call it. Just describe it, and we'll probably figure out what it's called. It's a crystal container for flowers with long stems. I need to get one for my mum. Oh, a vase. That's it. They should have a bunch in giftware. Let's go to get one. I'm going to have to stop by Jewel on my way home. Is that okay with you guys? I'm almost completely out of groceries. No problems. I could pick up a couple of things too. Look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now you will hear the rest of the conversation. As you listen, answer questions number twenty-seven to thirty. Hi, Masha Hero. How's it going? Fine, I guess. How about you? Busy. Guess who's coming our way? Hi, guys. What's up? Nothing much. We just ran into each other. That's nice. So, Masha Hero, how's the coffee maker working? Actually, it doesn't work well. It was a waste of money. I guess I should have shopped around for a good one. Why don't you take it back? I'd like to, but I've misplaced the receipt. Well, if it's any consolation, my shopping wasn't all that great either. I wish I'd never bought Stephanie a necklace. Just last night, she was telling me how she wished she had Liz Taylor's new perfume. She did not like my gift at all. That makes three displeased shoppers. Guess what? The camera I bought and shipped to Mike just this morning is now on sale. It's a pity that I bought it then. Then again, I guess I shouldn't complain. It was a good buy, even though I didn't get the best deal on it. Anyway, Masha Hero, I suggest you look for that receipt and just go to the complaints department and say I'd like to exchange this, please. It's as simple as that. And Will, it's not too late for you to ask for a refund. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecture on William Kidd. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. A pirate story, William Kidd. William Kidd, who is better known by the name Captain Kidd, was a 17th-century British privateer and semi-legendary pirate, who became celebrated in English literature as one of the most colourful outlaws of all time. Fortune seekers have hunted his buried treasure in vain through succeeding centuries. Kidd's early career is obscure. It is believed he went to sea as a youth. After 1689, he was sailing as a legitimate privateer for Great Britain against the French in the West Indies, and off the coast of North America. In 1690, he was an established sea captain and shipowner in New York City, where he owned property. At various times, he was dispatched by both New York and Massachusetts to rid the coast of enemy privateers. In London, in 1695, he received a royal commission to apprehend pirates who molested the ships of the East India Company in the Red Sea and in the Indian Ocean. Kidd sailed from Deptford on his ship, the Adventure Galley, on February 27, 1696, called at Plymouth, and arrived at New York City on July 4 to take on more men. Avoiding the normal pirate haunts. He arrived by February sixteen ninety seven at the Comoro Islands off East Africa. It was apparently some time after his arrival there that Kidd, still without having taken a prize ship, decided to turn to piracy. In August sixteen ninety seven, he made an unsuccessful attack on ships sailing with mocha coffee from Yemen, but later took several small ships. His refusal two months later to attack a Dutch ship. Nearly brought his crew to mutiny, and in an angry exchange, Kidd mortally wounded his gunner, William Moore. Kidd took his most valuable prize, the Armenian ship Queda Merchant, in January 1698, and scuttled his own unseaworthy adventure galley. When he reached Anguilla in the West Indies, April 1699, he learnt that he had been denounced as a pirate. He left the Queda Merchant at the island of Hispaniola, where the ship was possibly scuttled. In any case, it disappeared with its questionable booty, and sailed in a newly purchased ship, the Antonio, to New York City, where he tried to persuade the Earl of Bellamont, then Colonial Governor of New York, of his innocence. Bellamont, however, sent him to England for trial, and he was found guilty, May eighth and ninth, seventeen o one. Of the murder of Moore and on five indictments of piracy. Important evidence concerning two of the piracy cases was suppressed at the trial, and some observers later questioned whether the evidence was sufficient for a guilty verdict. Kidd was hanged, and some of his treasure was recovered from Gardiner's Island off Long Island. Proceeds from his effects and goods taken from the Antonia were donated to charity. In years that followed, the name of Captain Kidd has become inseparable from the romanticized concept of the swashbuckling pirate of Western fiction. Among other stories concerning caches of treasure he supposedly buried is Edgar Allan Poe's *The Gold Bug*. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.